going on YouTube? It's Joe the Flame in here, and I'm here to bring you guys a brand new piece of content for you guys. Uh, as you guys know, I've been a draft battler for the last 15 months, and I've done some good, I've done some bad, but overall, I try to have fun. That's the main thing about Draft League, and it's also revitalized my love of the games as we get ready for Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and Legends Arceus, of which uh, I did just put a new video out on the channel about the new Hisuian Zorua and Zoroark, and I'm going to say it right now because this video will be going up on Sunday the 24th. I'm doing a reaction slash tier list video coming up on the unused type combinations. It's going to be a personal ranking of my own of which ones will be, and then I'm going to react to you guys. So if you can, go to Twitter.com, and if you have a Twitter account, look for my Twitter. My at is at JoeCarlino14. And go over there and reply to my uh, tweet because I want to see what you guys are going to react to. What is the best unused type combination? There are 16 as of this recording that are still unused. And I'm not counting ones that are exclusive to legendaries or exclusive to mega evolutions. Now, if you want to use those as your type, fair game. But for ones that are, you know, normal... Pokemon, like how Zoro and Zoroark, they went from Dark to Normal and Ghost. Uh, it's going to be something like that. It's going to be those types. So, I mean, if you want to talk about Mega Altaria with Dragon Fairy, I won't uh, divulge that. But what I will say is you better be ready for that reaction video. I'm not going to spoil how it's going to be. You'll just have to watch and see. You'll just have to watch. But getting back to what you see on the screen right now. The International Competitive Pokemon League. They're doing a off-season right now, or I think it's season two, I'm not really 100% sure. The fact of the matter is, I was part of their showdown league, we managed to make playoffs. Um, unfortunately, we took a loss to JV and the Atlanta Victinis, and in all fairness, I got him his first win against yours truly, but that's in showdown mode. We still have the edge and the Wi-Fi until he probably kicks our behind in the Wi-Fi, because that's where he's more dangerous, if, if I'll be honest myself. Uh, but I decided, let me do the draft analysis for you guys. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you guys a team. You guys see we have 11 slots here. Now, technically, we have 12. I was just too lazy to put it out there and make a 12th one. Or I just didn't understand Photoshop, really, because I was trying to figure out where the 12th one would be. Um, so, I'm just going to say it right now. The 12th mom on the team was Torcat. I picked up Torcat because I had three points left. It's a decent fire type, it can be fast, it's got intimidate support, it's got parting shot, it's got U-turn. It can do a couple of things, so I'm just letting you guys know right now. Torqued was my last mod, but these 11 are pretty much the real team. And also, I should mention, it's a low tier draft. So, at first when I thought low tier, I will be honest, I followed the UVL. I followed all of those coaches there, their finals should be going up uh, any time within the next two weeks, I think. I'm not really sure what their upload schedule was. I know it's, if I'm correct, that's an automatic um, leak, if I, if I remember correctly. But I'm looking forward to seeing who makes it there and who's going to be the champion of that season. But we're going off of their tiering system in this low tier. So, again, like I said, low tier, I thought it was all not fully evolved Pokemon, which meant, like, you know, Porygon 2 would be the first draft pick or uh, Dusclops would be the first draft pick. But no, apparently they do have fully evolved Pokemon. I think this is like anything from, I want to say Enu on the Smogon tiers or Smogon, however you guys pronounce it. Um, but I really don't know. I really don't know. I don't follow those competitive tiers all that much. But let's get into my team real quick. The first pick that we did, we picked Noivern with 15 points. This is arguably our fastest Mon on the team. It's a base 123 speed. Dragon and Flying type, uh, it can hit hard, it can hit fast, it's got U-Turn, it's got Dragon Pulse, it's got Boom Burst, it's got, uh, it can drop a Draco, Specs Draco is insane, I could even run an Eject Pack on it. Now, it is a Dragon and Flying type, so we have to watch out for Ice types, and Ice Shark. So, really it's a, t it's a, it's a good mod, it's a fast mod, it's sort of like a Glass Cannon, but... Anything is possible with Noivern, and also it does offer Defog support, so if I don't, you know, want to bring, like, Rapid Spin or something like that, or if I just want to eliminate hazards throughout the game, I got Noivern for that. 
Our second pick in the draft was Ninetales. Now, we got the Kanto Ninetales. We do not have Alolan Ninetales. I, I found that out that they do not do that rule where it's like picking the name of the Pokemon gets you access to all forms of the Pokemon. So that means that we have Ninetales as our Kanto support. But now, it can run Flash Fire as its ability if I want to, you know, run around the fire types out there. Or it can run Drought. Now, I don't necessarily have a good Chlorophyll user. I do have a decent Chlorophyll user. You guys will see that as we get closer to that pick. However, Ninetales can do a couple of things. I mean, it can run Flamethrower. It can uh, set up, the, like I said, it can set up the sun with Drought. Uh, also, I should have mentioned, uh, Weather Rocks are banned in this league. So I can't, you know, use a Heat Rock for eight turns of sun. It's five turns from the minute Ninetales comes onto the field. Uh, and then if I want to do like support monster, I mean it gets Hypnosis, it gets Grudge, uh, I can use Will-O-Wisp, and this thing gets Hex, I mean it's based on a Kitsune, so, and we all know the uh, belief on the Kitsune, or on Ninetales' uh, Pokedex entry, that if you touch one of its tails, you're cursed for a thousand years. I don't want to be cursed for a millennium, I've already been cursed for 25 years. Next up is Pangora, and I decided to do this one because it was a pretty decent dark and fighting type for the coverage now. Fairy types, they will have a field day with this one. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Dark and fighting, plus this thing has not the greatest defense and special defense. Um, but it hits like a tank, it's got Scrappy, it's got Mold Breaker, it's got Iron Fist. Three good abilities, especially Scrappy, because if I send this out against a ghost type i can hit it with close combat so like, let's say they have sableye and i run a lumberry then i can hit close combat for super effective damage and even spirit tomb too for that matter uh and then like other other normal types you know that are resistant i can hit those um but really i mean scrappy right now i mean it's going to be good for zoro we know this for a fact now uh if you want go check out matt o'shea's uh, channel. He did do a video about Zoroark in competitive Pokemon for the new normal ghost type. I highly recommend going and seeing that video. Next up is Tentacruel. Now Tentacruel is a good support mod, but it does hit hard. It can hit hard physically, it can hit hard specially. It's got Rapid Spin, it's got Spikes, it's got T-Spikes, it's got Magic Coat, uh, it's got Sludge Bomb and Wave, it's got Skull, Surf, it's a good mod, all around. And I should also mention, um, I'm not really good on the nicknames, as you guys can probably tell. I just randomly throw nicknames out there. Uh, but this one, I actually worked with a fellow coach in the ICP, both in the Showdown League and in this league. His name is Team Knots TV. You guys have probably seen him a couple of times. Coach of the Nottingham Forest Curse. Great dude. Hell of a competitor. Um, he actually is nicknaming his Sand Slash after yours true so i wanted to return the favor i said since i didn't nickname any of my pokemon yet pick one of them and it will be your nickname so tentacruel's nickname for the whole season will be mcnot's face his prick not mine i asked him what he wanted and i'm going with it next up is frostless now this one i like frostless i and as much as I want to say that it's better than Glalie, it, I mean, it is. It is better than Glalie because uh, after Glalie lost, or not really after Glalie lost it, but the Moody ability got completely banned from any competitive Pokemon because of how freaking broken that ability can be. Um, honestly, Glalie should have been an Ice Rock type. I think we can all agree. It's a dang piece of ice that is harder than rock with a face and when it mega evolves the rock breaks it should have been ice rock but because it's not it's not better than frostless in my opinion so i mean frostless is really good it's fast base 110 speed it hits hard and surprisingly it's attack and special attack are both are both same i think it's, I'm correct, it's a base 80 uh, let me open up Showdown real quick. Uh, yeah, base 80 on attack and special attack, and base 70 on 
uh, the defenses. So, I mean, that's pretty good for Frost Slice, if you ask me. Um, I mean, base 70 in defense and special defense, and also its HP isn't the greatest also, but we, we, can, we can work with that. Uh, I mean, it can also set up spikes. It can set up... Uh, Ha uh, not hazard, well, I mean, it's hazard with spikes, but it can also do status control with Thunder Wave and Will O Wisp. Uh, it can do damage with Hex, Shadow Ball, Ice Beam. Although, surprisingly, this Ice type does not get freeze dry. Game Freak, can we rectify that, please, in Legends Arceus or BDSP or uh, maybe even Gen 9, whenever the heck that happens? Give Frostlass freeze dry. The Ice type. The Ice Type Kimono needs Freeze Drop. Next up is Mudsdale. Now, I will be honest. I'm not, an, I'm not a drinker. I'm not a drinker of anything that isn't water, milk, or iced coffee. I will not sugarcoat that. However, when it comes to Mudsdale, I am a fan of the Clydesdale horse. I have... My, my parents did horse racing back in the day. They still technically have the rights to their uh, stable. Um, I mean, they really didn't win all that much, if I'll be fully honest with you. That's probably why I don't win all that much. Um, but let's be real. The, Buds, the Budweiser commercials, who doesn't love those Clydesdales? Man, they are probably the most gorgeous horse on planet Earth. And the fact that they are exclusive to Budweiser is just insane. And they are so well kept. I mean, I just saw a couple weeks ago, the Clydesdales for Budweiser just welcomed a new one. They just welcomed a new one and they, nicked, and they named it Eminem. How great is that? A Clydesdale is named after one of the greatest rappers of our generation. Although that one can be debated if you want to have fun with that, but I think that Eminem is a good rapper. Uh, but Mudsdale, getting back to it specifically, <laughs> this thing is a tank. This thing is a damn tank. It can take hits, stamina will boost it up, it can do rock control, it can do uh, earthquake, high horsepower, heavy slam, body press. Uh, and I'll just say this, even though it's a ground type, could you imagine if this thing got heat crash? I mean, it gets heavy slam, could you imagine if this thing got heat crash too? That move would be abused on a mom like this. Next up is Apple Time. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Joe, you got two dragon types on your team, and both of them are four times weak to ice. Hold your roll there. Apple Time gets access to Thick Fat. And if you've watched a couple of draft battles, you'll know that, granted, yes, it was on Triple Axle of all moves, and it was on a Chinchino, but. Triple Axel is not a two-hit KO on Appleton with the right defense and HP investment. And plus, Apple Acid is a decent move against Dragon Pulse. Um, I think it also can get a couple of... I think it gets Solar Beam. Um, but it's mainly a support mod. Appleton would be a support mod. I mean, Leech Seed is a good move. Um, and, and, and I like Appleton. I, truthfully, I prefer Appleton to Flat. Because at least I don't have to bank on 80% accurate physical moves. And as you guys remember, in one of the leagues that I was in, that was the main reason that we won that battle. Next up is Magneton. Now Magneton, uh, there's, there's a guy in this showdown league for ICP, his name is Woodsy Noctowl, also a good dude. For the while, we were fighting with him for the first overall seed, but then we took a slump and plummeted down to sixth, whereas he just abused Megalopony to take the number one seat, but he had a scary team, y'all. He was scary. And the main thing that he would sometimes do, analytic Magneton. He wouldn't do sturdy, and he wouldn't do a sash. He would do analytic Magneton with Steel Beam. That move does a lot of damage. Then you add in the analytic boost, just adds a little bit more fuel to the fire. Now, granted, you'll lose your Magneton, but to get that extra power boost, that was something I did not see coming. Next up is Spirit Tomb. Now, I've used Spirit Tomb before. I like it. Uh, I've used it more of a defensive 
uh, defensive oriented with a little bit of attack in it, uh, mainly with like Will-O-Wisp and Hex and whatnot. Uh, but Spirit Twin can do a couple of decent extra things. Like it can set, like I said, it can do uh, Poltergeist with Choice Band. It gets Shadow Sneak. It gets Dark Pulse. Um, I mean, in all fairness. Who doesn't remember when we first battled Cynthia? Because, I, I mean, I'm in BDSP mode right now. I'm in Sinnoh mode, uh, despite everything that's going on. But who doesn't remember the first time we saw this mom come out on Cynthia's team? And we're just like, what the heck is this thing? And the fact that it was basically a defensive Sableye. And I don't say much better, if you ask me. I, I prefer Spirit Tomb to Sableye. Aside from, you know, S Sableye with Prankster and whatnot. Uh, but Spear Tomb can take hits. It gets access to extra sensory. I think it still gets access to Silver Wind. Um, I, I think it also gets Ominous Wind, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to have to re-double check on it. But I like Spear Tomb a lot. And I'm looking forward to using it once again. Next up is Wigglytuff. Now, Wigglytuff was one of my later picks. And it was also a... I needed a fairy type. I needed a fairy type. And Wigglytuff is a good fairy type. If you've seen some people use... Really tough. Now, keep in mind, they are much better than me. They are much better than me, so they know what to do. Uh, but Wigglytuff, it can do support. It's got teleport access. It's got Thunder Wave. Uh, it's got coverage. I think of all the super powerful elemental moves and Fire Blast, Thunder, and Blizzard, if I'm not mistaken, or. It gets Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, and Ice Beam. Or maybe it gets all six of them. I gotta double check on it. Um, but it's good for crippling and then switching out. So I'm gonna try to see how I do with Wigglytuff. And like I said, I'm not really sure what I can do with it. Um, but it's definitely a good mod. It's definitely a good mod. And the fairy type, we needed a fairy. That's as simple as that. We needed fairy coverage. And then, like I told you guys, at the beginning of the video, Torkal was my 12th and final pick, but this is the other pick, and that was my last mod. Lopany. I went Sinnoh, guys. Uh, I picked Lopany because it's base 105 speed, it's got a good attack stat, uh, triple axle, jump kick, the elemental punches. Um, I mean, I don't think we can use Frustration right now until Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl come out, if I'm not mistaken, because... We did see the uh, screenshot leaks that Return is coming back, so I don't know about that. Uh, but like I told you guys with uh, Woodsy, he abused Mega Lopin now. Thankfully, Megas are not allowed in Sword and Shield Wi-Fi. Um, but this mod is good. I mean, Limber is a okay ability, but nobody really runs Limber. Um, Q Charm. I mean, the 30% infatuation is definitely something to watch out for because you got the 30% there, and then it's 50% to attack or not attack. Um, and then Klutz. I mean, I've seen people run the weirdest Klutz sets in existence. So, I don't really know what I'm going to be expecting to use with Lopini. I'm hoping to do some good stuff with it. Um, and I'm even going to throw it out here for you guys now. I said it with Tentacruel that that one is named after Team Knots TV. If any of the fellow coaches want to have one of my mods named after them, or even one of my subscribers, pick one, first come, first serve. Now, the first battle is going to be against Helios and the San Jose Sharpedos. I've already randomized six names for those six mods that I'm bringing. I'm not saying when I'm bringing them on this draft analysis video. Um... But if any of them want to, you guys can let me know in the comments below. If you want, leave a like on my team. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. And I will see you guys for week one. And if I'm not mistaken, the week one battle will be uploaded on Friday the 29th. Either it's then or it's the following Friday. I'll have to double check. But thank you guys for watching. My name is Joe DeFlamin. I mainly go by Joe, and I'm going to flame out for you guys as I get ready to battle Helios. Peace out, everybody. Congratulations! You made it all the way to the end of this video. I thank you very much for your support on this current video. If you want to interact with me more, 
check out my socials right here. That's my Twitch. That's my YouTube. That's my Twitter. You can comment on any one of them and tell me how good I was, how bad I was, anything you want. Goodbye.